Hey, hey. Hello. Teresa Cole, welcome to your first Sunday call. There's Maureen and Sarah, mom and Lorlin, Julie, Raquel. Awesome. Hey, guys. Can you guys see my big, giant baby dog who has his head on the pillow like a little baby? That's a Christmas pillow that I got out for Christmas time. And immediately, as soon as I put it out, both puppies have taken their turns trying to like stuff themselves onto it. So crazy, crazy doggos. What's up, Brenda? And there's Isla and Jen, Sam, Molly, Jamie Lynn. What's up, guys? And of dogs. Yeah, look at that silly dog. Both dogs. And then the other one Barking. is right look at <laughs> Surrounded, oh surrounded by doggos. <laughs> I am surrounded. Sweet, guys. I hope everybody had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Um, we're still eating leftovers at my house, which I just had two bowls of turkey and cranberries. So those are like the leftovers that are my favorite. It's like a giant bowl of turkey and cranberry sauce. Uh, what's, what are your, like, what's your favorite leftovers? Mashed potatoes and gravy. Mm. Brenda, come over. I have a huge pot of them. Okay. <laughs> we just had a leftover party and I swear we have more leftovers. Amy, like to get rid of the leftovers. And I'm like, why are there more? Amy, I saw your post about that and I completely misinterpreted what a leftover party means. And I don't know what I thought it meant. Oh no, what did you I, think of it? I don't know. I It was like, it was something that it just didn't dawn on me that you were talking about Thanksgiving leftovers. That's hilarious. Now I'm like, like should I, should I change it? <laughs> leftover people, leftover occasion, <laughs> leftovers. I mean... Thanksgiving leftovers. That's we always have a Thanksgiving leftover party because I don't want to have it because we host every year and I don't want it all in my house. That's hilarious. Uh, it's hilarious that I did not understand it and I still or... just accepted it as a thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> it's. I think I have a sinus infection, so I'm blaming it on that. Oh, okay. I. Oh, well, it might be my run on sentences that I do all the time, also. You know how when you have a sinus infection, you get like bubble head? Like that's what yes. I feel like. I have bubble head. Yes. Um, all right, guys, let's get right to it. Okay, so we have a, a couple quick announcements. So announcement number one is our give back event is coming up. So the give back signups will start on Tuesday and go through the weekend. And there are, if you live in a place where there's a handful of Fit Me people, they are doing like meetups where you can do the 5K with people. But if you don't live near Fit Me people, you can just do the 5K with whoever you want to do it with. Um, you can do any version of it. It's an ugly sweater 5k. It's to raise money for Operation Homefront, which is a nonprofit that supports military families. And it's something that we do as a Fit Me family twice a year. We get together and move for a good cause. And so um, Nikki Miller has done an amazing job with a committee of our coaches and members to put this together. So watch for that sign up on go that goes Tuesday through Saturday. And again, if you live near people, get together and do it. But if you don't, then you can do it by yourself and just snap a picture and share it. Um, so that's announcement number one. Announcement number two, before we get to our target for the week, is I sent out to everybody the replay of our like Black Friday announcement. And I wanted to give you just a little bit of detail on that. You know, one of the things that is, I think, unique about Fit Me is we're constantly trying to learn and improve. And so two years ago, actually, um, Coach Molly and I like looked at what we were doing coaching wise and thought we can do it different and better based off of what we've learned, like watching and learning and seeing what people needed. And that's kind of why we came out with this new version of Fit Me for next year. We watched, especially the people who came to the events, and we saw how powerful it was for people to have that information, for people to have that like deep dive 
for their metabolism or their hormones or what's going on and how, how we were actually giving people recommendations like, Hey, we want you to start strength training, but we didn't have a program for them to do. And we're like, go find some strength training or like get yourself moving better out of pain. But we didn't have a a person to help them, a coach to help them specifically with that. And we realized like we had a hole in our program and we could do it better. And so we are constantly trying to improve and make what we do better, which is why we came out with this new version. And in 2022, when someone starts with Fit Me as a new member, um, this will be what they do. Um, now for you guys, you, you started with a different version and that version is still pretty great. And you can stay with it as long as you want. You're grandfathered in. You don't have to make any changes. So you do not have to change a thing. However, if you do want this new version, just know that this is our absolute best version of supporting you. This is giving you everything that you need. Those four times a year where you're going to deep dive like into your metabolism, into your diet history, into what you need, because what it does is it empowers you and your coach to make your action steps more, more effective. Your coach has more information. You have more information. When you have a strength program written just for you, you're moving forward. It's not guessing anymore. When you have movement programming that's helping your knees hurt less or your hips hurt less, you're going to be more able to do those 10,000 steps a day. And for some of you guys, you, you might already have these things in other places and you won't need to make this change. And that's okay. That's great too. But if you are just waiting because you're like, mm, I don't know if I need that. I want you to take the time to consider it. If you haven't watched the replay, that's step one. Watch the replay. Step two is ask yourself where you want to be and if those resources would help you, if that would make a big difference. And if the answer is yes, then all you have to do is shoot me an email and we will talk about the details. If it's not possible for you or if it's not the right thing, I'm not going to push you to do it. I'm going to just talk to you about it. Um, but don't write it off before you even considered it because this is based off of us looking at you and seeing what will make the most difference for you. I am unwilling as your coach and as the leader of Fit Me to leave something on the table on our end that we can offer you. And so that's what this is. And if you do this for you, I recognize it's a really big step and it's a big commitment. Um, it's a commitment of your energy. It's a commitment of your excitement. It's a commitment of your financial resources. And so I recognize all of that because I know that we are going to give you that back. Um, and so I recognize what a big step that is, which is why we are doing like the special um, for the events. It's like, if you do this for you, we're going to make the events a done deal. You'll get the one day event plus the Fit Me weekend like thrown in for free. So again, all I want you to do is think about it. And if you have questions, ask those questions and coach Molly and I can talk you through it. And again, if you've got those resources, other places, you might not need to, you guys don't have to change a thing. So I just wanted to share that with you because that black Friday deal ends tomorrow night. So to get the events for free ends tomorrow night and you have to at least email me by then. You don't have to make a payment or anything. You just got to email me. Oh, crazy dogs. You don't have to pay. You just have to email me and let me know you're in. Um, and then we can work out the details later. So that's all I got to say. And then now we're going to get to the target of the week, which is focused on December and focused on our holiday season. So we're wrapping up Movember. I hope you guys moved more this month than you were before. Um, and now we're getting ready to go from Thanksgiving weekend into our back to back to back occasions that we are both excited about and maybe a little anxious about because sometimes those holiday occasions start to add up. So I want to share with you a strategy that I actually created for Coach Leah two years ago when she and I were working together one-on-one. -on -one. And we were having a one-on-one -on -one coaching call, like right about now. And she was telling me how she was a little bit nervous and stressed going into the holidays because she felt like she was making progress, but she had so many things coming up. And she was like, I don't know. Um, 
how I'm going to get through it without feeling fluffy and like it's going to be every other day. And so I asked her to do a simple thing, which is what your target is going to be for the week. I asked her to look at the entire month of December. And in that entire month, I want you to pick the occasions that you are personally excited about. So if you have like work party, if you've got gym party, if you've got family cookie occasion, if you've got get together at your family's house, you probably have a whole bunch of different opportunities for like treats and fun. Um, which ones are you personally excited about? Which ones do you care about? And what I want you to do, your target for the week is to circle them on a calendar or it write them down and send them to your coach because these are the ones you should absolutely enjoy. You shouldn't be stressing about, is this a fit me plate? I mean, you should give yourself points if you make it into a fit me plate, but those can just be ones that you just enjoy. If you want to have mashed potatoes and macaroni and cheese for dinner, like, because that's what you do on Christmas, that's what you do. And you can, I want you to circle those because you're pumped about them. And then what that's also going to do is that's going to create clarity for you around the other ones that you may be like obligated or needing to attend, but aren't your treats. They're not your fun occasions. So those other ones, it doesn't mean you don't go. I don't believe that that's sustainable for like our healthy lifestyle. It's not the point. We don't have to not socialize just because we are like choosing to eat or do things differently. But what it does mean is that those are not your kind of like splurge or not thinking about it occasions. These are more like intentional ones. So say like you have some sort of like mandatory cookie swap you got to go to at work. You're not even excited about it. You don't even like those people's cookies. You can make cookies, take them, swap them and participate. But don't worry about it. Get the cookies that you get and give them away. You don't even like them. You're not excited about it. Um that's what I'm talking about as far as participating, but not letting it be a stressor for you. You don't have to eat the cookies just because everybody made them and is there trying them. Same thing with like, maybe you have to go to a work dinner um, and the work dinner, you're going to go, but it doesn't have to be, you know, this mountain of treats. You might simply just pick something that looks really similar to a fit me plate. Maybe you're picking like prime rib and you're picking some veggies and maybe you've got a roll on the side. It's fit me inspired. It's not perfect, but you're like, this isn't my favorite thing. So I'm just going to make this look kind of normal. I'm going to drink water. I'm not drinking alcohol. So your task of circling the dates that are most important to you will give you clarity around what the other days should look like. Are they going to be perfect? No, but they'll basically be your normal days. Now, how do you, that is your like first and most important strategy for December, but I'm going to give you your second strategy and it's not really an action step, but it's something that I want you to think through um, because I feel like it is a huge uh, way to shift the momentum in your favor. I want you to think about what it means to you to win your morning. Because no matter what kind of occasion you have coming up in December, where it's a party, where it's a whatever, whether it's just a stressful day, you can win your morning and set your intention for that whole day. So what does that mean for you? What would you put at the front of the day that you would be like, yep, I just won my morning And this day is in motion because if you can figure that piece out also, then no matter what the day looks like, whether it's a regular day for you or whether it's a treat day, you can consider that you're just going to win your morning more often than not in December. Maybe that means for you that winning your morning is taking, drinking a glass of water, having a 10 minute, like move your body, like whether it's go for a walk or whether it's like do some kind of stretching and maybe it is starting with a solid like fit me plate style breakfast. Boom. You won your morning. I promise you, if you can figure out whatever that is for you, it's going to set your days in motion. It will feel differently than if you start your days with like eating like leftover pumpkin pie. It's just one of those like psychological snowballs. It doesn't mean that your day is going to be perfect. It doesn't have to be, but it does change your trajectory. Um, We always say in Fit Me, like your first bite counts. 
And that's kind of what I'm talking about. Like your first bite of your day counts. And so in a season where we're going to enjoy it, we want to have this to be like happiness. This is, this is the benefit of working hard on a healthy lifestyle is being able to enjoy the holidays and not feel stressed knowing that you are right back to it. You know, you're right back to working out. You're right back to drinking your water. You're right back to eating your vegetables. You don't do processed junk. You're not drinking your calories. So then the occasions that you pick these like sweet treat occasions are probably going to be more frequent this month than they would be on another month, but they do not have to throw you off. And I think that these two strategies, strategy one, identifying your most important occasions and getting excited about those and not, not worrying about them. And then knowing that everything else is going to look pretty normal. And then strategy number two, winning your morning, maybe winning your mornings, going for a mile run. Marlena did that for like a hundred days straight. I don't know how her day couldn't have gone well when she's winning her morning by going for that mile run every morning. Maybe again, it, it can be very different from person to person. It might be taking 15 minutes for, you know, quiet time for reading or devotionals. It might be, um, again, I think give, for me, just drinking a big glass of water sometimes feels like I'm winning because that seems like the thing I'm playing catch up on all day. So if I drink my glass of water to start, I feel like I already started on the right foot. So those are your two homeworks. Your one homework to send to your coach or your task for the week is to identify the occasions that you're excited about this month. The second homework is to think about what you, what does it mean to win your morning? And we're going to win our mornings throughout the month of December so that we can really enjoy this holiday season together. Um, cause I think that's also something that sets us apart from everything else out there. What we do different inside Fit Me, what we are doing in Fit Me is we are enjoying the occasions that we choose to and want to enjoy. And we're setting boundaries and healthy habits in place for the rest of the time. So we can actually like feel good. And when someone's like, oh, I thought you were doing a thing. Can't have that. Like, I didn't know you could have that. And you can be like, I can have whatever I want. Um, and I love this thing and I'm having it because you know what? Tomorrow I'm probably going to eat vegetables for breakfast. Bye. You know, like people just don't live like that. And that's how we're setting ourselves up to be. So I'd love to kind of just open it up for either thoughts or questions on, you know, these two strategies for December. Have you ever used these before? Do you think that this will work for you? Um, do you have a different concern about the holiday season that we could talk about or, or question about what would work best for you? Um, let's take 10 minutes and chat. Does anybody know what winning their morning looks like for them? Maybe you could, if somebody knows, so, you could share that. So when I, so uh, when I had my fourth son, he is 18 months old now. My coach, Rachel, who's the mama coach, was like, you need to start doing a quiet time. And I was like, you're crazy. I have four children. That's not happening. And I started, I've told this story many times, but it, Amy, you muted. You got muted. You're back. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, you're back. So I started setting my phone for two minutes because I was like, I cannot do five. Five minutes for myself. That's ridiculous. So that was, I, I can't remember if it was before I had him or if it was after. But anyways, he's 18 months old now. And I set my alarm an hour before I have to be anywhere now. And I have a whole hour to myself to drink my coffee, to do my Bible study, to journal, just for me. The phone is locked into the bathroom. It does not come out of the bathroom until my Bible study is over. Because what will I do? I will mess on my phone. I will return work emails. I will start creating posts for coaching, whatever, <laughs> you know? And so it's locked in there. And it, I literally go to bed at night and I'm excited to get up. <laughs> part because I get to drink my cup of coffee but the other part is because it's quiet in my house at that time and I get that time to myself so your and quiet times at night or in the morning morning morning, morning. Mm -hmm. so I put my phone in the bathroom at night oh I um, see and I don't get it out until the next morning until I'm done so it's so locked in there until your quiet time is over yes yes was it hard exactly. at first 
oh my gosh, it took me. So I started with two minutes and it took me, well, at least 18 months to get to an hour, but I stuck at five minutes for at least three months. That's awesome. Um, and then I just kept knocking away. And then I did go from 45 minutes to an hour. Cause I was like, dude, I want more time. And by then it had become a habit. So 15 extra minutes wasn't a big deal. But what I had to do is make sure I got my bed in or bed, my butt in bed earlier because I wake up at four 30, a lot of mornings. So that means my alarm is going off at three 30 or it's going off at four or whatever, you know? And yeah. so I had to be really consistent with making sure my phone went away. And that was another habit I stacked so I could accomplish winning my mornings. I love that. And I think you, you shared a couple like gold nuggets in there, which it's not enough just to have the intention of like, let me do this in the morning. It required a work back. Like the work back is that the night before the phone goes away. Like that's the only way that the morning would happen because otherwise it's just there. You grab it and you, you get busy with doing the things. So I love that that like played into it. So, I mean, if your intention, like if you're winning your morning is to take your dog for a walk, like you better have your shoes laid out the night before, you know, it's little things like that work back or your alarm set, like so that you've thought it through, like this is how I'll actually walk the dog in the morning. Um I, so I think that that was a really important gold nugget there on how to win your morning. And then the other piece that you said that really stands out to me is like you said it to be very manageable at first, and that still was super hard. So even five minutes or two minutes is hard when it's a new thing. It sounds ridiculous, but it's not. Um, but still, that was manageable. You really can't talk yourself out of that. Um, you can do it. And so then you built up from there. And so I think both of those strategies are key to like deciding what is, how do I win my morning? Um, really good, Amy. That's really cool. Hey, Chrissy. This is Annette hey, lady. Peter. How are you? I'm good. Um, I have a question regarding the picking the occasions in December. Yeah. So I'm going to go through that uh, with my coach. But what what do we do or do you have any tips? Because I'm going on a two-week trip, mm -hmm. you know, with all the kids. We're driving. We're going to be multiple locations. Um, I'm staying at two different places one week each. So how do I, I guess, um, how do I go about planning, you know, my fit me plates so that I'm not, I'm going to pick some locations so I can splurge, but... <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. this is hard when I'm not going to be at home with you know how I have everything set up and mm -hmm. if you or anybody you know has any tips let me know it'll I mean we can definitely brainstorm this together but one of the things is it's it is very doable if you are okay with two things one is that it's not going to look perfect so that's got to be like the given it's not going to look perfect when you're traveling for two weeks with kids and people and all that. But the second piece is that there, if with just a little bit of like, um, set aside time, you probably can still make most days pretty solid. Um, and so what I would recommend is one, like figure out how you can get in a 15 to 30 minute movement each day. So even if it's like, Oh, we're at our so-and-so's house and we're doing all the things, like put that first thing in the morning, be like, yo, I need to get a walk in. Like, can you watch the little people so I can go take my 30 minute walk guaranteed. If you ask, it will happen. If you're like, oh, I'm just going to go with the flow and like, see what everybody else is doing. It won't happen. So you have to kind of set your intention of like, no matter what I'm getting something in, you know, every day. And the other piece is that it might take you being a little bit stocked up on some of the stuff you want. So for example, like if you're staying with other people for like a full week straight, you may have to like run to the grocery store at the beginning of it just to like pick some of the stuff that you know you like. Like if you're like, oh, I really like eggs and veggies in the morning. Like if you have already gotten it and you threw it in the fridge, people are down for it. They're like, oh, okay, she likes eggs and veggies for, for breakfast. Or you, you pack some like protein oatmeal or something. Like 
it's just going to take that extra grocery store trip where you're just, I mean, it might take a half an hour to grab those or have it Instacart delivered to their house so that you have those options in place. So that way you don't just have to like, you're not sort of at the whim of everything around you. You've got some pre-planning done, but then you know what? Like if everybody goes out to dinner, just do the best you can. You know, that's not going to be a time where you're like packing a rubber made of food. You're just going to enjoy being with your people. Um, but I think like, staying with people and traveling, stocking up on some of those key things and uh, making your movement a non-negotiable is really key. Does anybody else have any like brainstorming thoughts or feedback for, for Annette? I'd say pack your favorite water bottle, water cup. Good one. Yep. I was just going to say, and we'll talk about this in that, but like picking two or three things that you don't flex from, kind of like Christy was saying, the 30 minutes in the morning, if that's one of the things you want to do, and then something else that you're for sure, no matter what, I'm going to do these things. I like that. I'm always about rules of three. They're easy to remember. They're kind of easy fallbacks and picking three sort of non-negotiables is very doable. And Thank I also, you. yeah. And I also think the key, I mean, we didn't say it, but you kind of said it is you may be put into positions where you sort of have to say or ask for help say like, Hey, I would like to do this instead and just be okay with that. Like, it's totally okay. Most of the time people don't care, but they're not going to know unless you ask. Like, they're not going to know that you need to refill your water bottle or that you like want to stop and go to the bathroom because you drank your water. Like, it's okay if you ask. Um, or if they're like, hey, we're all pulling into Taco Bell, but like right next door is a grocery store. If you're like, hey, do you mind if I just go grab something from the deli section instead? Like, they have like way better choices. Nobody cares. Nine times out of 10, nobody cares. But we, we're kind of nervous to ask sometimes. It's a really good topic, Annette, to bring up. Any other thoughts or questions? Christy, I want to say something about that. Yeah. Um, because in a perfect world, what you said is true. And people don't care but many of us especially when we get into family situations or with family dynamics sometimes especially if there's history there they can make it into a big deal i mean they can say well can you eat this can you eat that and you're, man, 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 man. until you really just you know they're making your life very 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 miserable um or if you go ahead and eat that um dessert the one day you planned on it you'll hear wait you said you couldn't eat that you know, so I just want to throw that caution out there. Like if that happens, you just have to do the best you can to keep your sanity. And if you have, you know, to deal with that, hopefully you won't. But I always did, no matter what, you know, my food and my um, food choices were always under scrutiny and always a subject of derision or of just it was just always I you know it was really hard to fly under the radar so I just want to say if that happens to anybody you're not alone in that and it may sound lame but just do the best you can because you don't want to make yourself absolutely crazy that's all yeah that's a really good point and I think uh you have to choose for you when to like share what you're doing or why if you want to or not if you don't want to. I mean, that's like a very individual decision. Um, but at the end of the day, if you are doing something different, like if you didn't used to care and now all of a sudden you're like, hey, I, I do care. Like I want to drink my water and I want to like get some movement in today. And I, I would love to like do this instead of that. You might feel some friction on that. And that's, and that's almost should validate that you're doing something different and good, even if it's kind of annoying. But I think, you know, mom, that's a really good point that it's, it makes it extra hard when you're feeling like 
everyone is paying attention are going to scrutinize what you eat, whether it's like a vegetable or whether it's a piece of pie. Um, that is like an added element of challenge for sure. Um, and if you feel like that's you, I think that that's like one of the, one, a really great thing to talk through with your coach potentially is sort of where you are personally at with it and what might be some strategies to try um, in the, when those occasions come up. Um, Cause going into it, maybe with like some intentions or some, you know, preparation might be really helpful. Can I say one more quick thing? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think the, the cool thing that can come up is because 99% of the people that you deal with outside of this group still have diet mentality. And they're going to ask you, well, is that on your diet? Is that on your diet? Aren't you on your supposed to be? And, and that if the pre opportunity presents itself, that's when you really get to share. No, this isn't a diet. You know, there isn't any food really that um, is quote forbidden. I make choices on what's healthiest and sustainable for me to have good health. And you make it that opportunity and they may pay poo poo you, but um, I wouldn't be surprised if, if they really don't get it because we know everybody else thinks in diet mentality or not everybody, but pretty close to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's all. Yeah. That's awesome. Thanks mom for sharing that. Um, it's a really important piece of the holiday season and an added stressor um, that can be like uh, play a factor in all, everything that we're talking about. Um, it's like the real life application of it, right? Ultimately, that's what we're talking about. We're not living in la la land. Like we're talking about doing this stuff in real life. So thanks for bringing that up. And we can even build on that next week and talk about that some more. Um, I think that's it. So you've got your targets for the week. Your targets are to identify your occasions that you're like pumped about, that you're going to enjoy some treats um, during the month of December um, so that you have really good, you know, forethought on the ones that don't matter to you. And then I also want you to consider how you're going to win your morning and make that a priority for the month of December, winning your morning. Keep an eye out on Tuesday for the give back registration um, and sign up for that. And then the last piece is be sure to watch the replay of the announcement that I put out on Friday and shoot me an email um, or reach out to Coach Molly so we can discuss you and next year. Um, I think that's it, guys. Have an amazing week. See ya. Bye. Bye.